Hello everybody. <clears throat> so today we will be starting with some fun stuff. Definitely I'm not going to start with what is cyclone, what is hurricane and how does it form. Let's start with something more enjoyable. Let's say how about producing a vortex at our homes. So let's get started. Alright, to get started with making tornado or cyclone or a vortex at our home, we have Stephen coming to help us with that. In the first experiment, Stephen tells us how to use simple water to create vortex. What he does is he takes water in a bottle and he gives it a, a little bit of spin to it to create instability in stable water which start sort of vortex into the system. This initial vortex all right, to get started with making tornado or cyclone or a vortex at our home, we have Stephen coming to help us with that. In the first experiment, Stephen tells us how to use simple water to create vortex. What he does is he takes water in a bottle and he gives it a, a little bit of spin to it. To create instability in stable water which start sort of initial vortex into the system this initial vortex to grow up when he turned the bottle upside down this increase the instability because now on turning the bottle acceleration due to gravity is also acting on water so we can see that after this first experiment where he used water only, pure water, without any color, he get white vortex or almost transparent vortex with little bit white bubbles that give it white color. And in the second experiment, he show us how to create a colorful vortex, a beautiful red vortex using oil. One more important thing to notice in this video is that he showed in the beginning that there is no seepage of water into second bottle when he joined two bottles and take a bottle full of water upside down we have a bottle filled with air at the bottom and at the top of it he attaches a bottle full of water now why is water not coming out of the bottle which is full of water when it is um, put over the empty water, <clears throat> water bottle. This is because the air inside this empty, seemingly empty bottle push the water from the uh, bottom and stops the water from coming or dropping down. Okay, so let's see how he does these interesting experiments. If you could be tricky, and I know you can, if you could part the waters, if you could have the air and the water kind of go at the same time and go fast, that would be pretty cool. That'd be great. So here's the technique that you got to practice. Great toy for the bathtub, all right? All right. So you put your hand on top. Do, do as oh, I do. Okay. All right, so put your hand on top. Right. Good job. Turn it upside down. Okay. All right. So now what you're going to do is this. You're going to give a little spinning action like this. So centripetal force, a little spinning action. Pull your hand out of the way and watch what you get. You get this beautiful vortex. Tornado. That fun? Oh, that is fast. Nice. Say, so, great, about four seconds for the whole bottle. That is, so that's a lot faster. If you look at it, the air comes up, the water comes down, the air comes up. And so you have, it's an old dishwasher trick. See how that works? Ah, I see. See? <laughs> now, there was a guy years ago by the name of Craig Burnham, and Craig's in Salem, Massachusetts, who invented this classic science toy called a tornado tube. Oh, so he invented we... this uh, when he was seven years old, and he didn't have, you know, this kind of thing. He was just trying to make an hourglass. So he had two bottles, and he had sand, and it didn't work. And like any good man, you had seven years old, you, you put the two bottles together and you wrap them with duct tape and none of, none of that works and everything and, and, and resorted to water in a little washer that was on the top and the, the bottom line was that in 1986 he filed for the patent on this thing called a tornado tube and this became one of the most oh, popular yeah. science toys great. in the whole world you and bet. so there's some things to be able to do with it but take a look at this as you look here. Um, notice how the water doesn't move at all because air is in the bottom. Oh, I see. Isn't that right. fun? So, so it's he, creating a vacuum said, block, right? Yeah, so, so the air is pushing up. And so he said, when you right. teach teachers to do this, realize that this is what he looked at for a long time. It wasn't until being frustrated that finally there was a little bit of motion there. Watch this. And all of a sudden, you, uh, you got your tornado. Now you're right? releasing the air. Yeah, is that air kind of fun? Air goes in, water goes so, out. So let me show you some variations that I think that are kind of fun. This was from a seven-year-old years ago who was in one of our science camps. And she said, can you color the air? You can color the water with food coloring, but can sure. you color the air? And she just put a little squirt of Dawn dish soap inside. So now when you spin it like this, take a look at that, 
you now have this oh, vortex look at as that. the water goes down, the uh, the bubbles go up, and I thought that was kind of cool. That is really my cool. My favorite one that's of all time. That's just dish soap in there? Just dish soap. But my favorite one of all time is this one here. I'm just using lamp oil. So I went to the, the department store sure. and got some lamp oil. Right. Lamp oil is the secret because it has the same thicknesses as water. Oil and water so, don't mix. You're right. And so now uh, I can tell you that Miss Spangler has every oil known to humankind <laughs> in the house for us to figure this one out. But watch what happens when we turn it upside down and we spin because oh, of the density of rinse you now define just the better. vortex. Oh, that, that is oh yeah. that is very cool. So you just kind of define the vortex.